Ferrari, Porsche, McLaren, Lamborghini. Notice something they all have in common. Every one of these legendary manufacturers has switched from naturally aspirated engines to twin turbo systems in their flagship models. This isn't a coincidence, it's an engineering revolution that solved the biggest problem in supercar performance. Today, I'm going to show you exactly why this shift happened and how twin turbo systems eliminated the dreaded turbo lag that made early turbocharged cars feel unpredictable and sometimes dangerous. Using real engine examples and dyno testing data, we'll see how this technology delivers both more power and better drivability. The turbo lag nightmare. Imagine pressing the throttle in a 1980s Porsche 911 Turbo and waiting, waiting, then suddenly getting thrown back in your seat. That's turbo lag in its purest form. Early turbo systems had this fundamental problem where exhaust gases took too long to spin up the single turbine. The delay between pressing the pedal and getting power made these cars unpredictable to drive, especially in racing situations where split-second reactions matter. The 1975 BMW 2002 Turbo was one of the worst offenders. Its power delivery was so abrupt that drivers had to constantly adjust their inputs to avoid losing control. Dyno tests from that era show some single turbo setups took over two seconds to reach full boost at 3000 RPM. In performance driving, that's an eternity. You could be halfway through a corner before the turbo finally spooled up, making smooth acceleration nearly impossible. Reliability was another major issue with early single turbo designs. The Oldsmobile Turbo Jetfire, one of the first production cars with a turbocharged gasoline engine, had serious overheating problems under sustained load. Its water methanol injection system, called Turbo Rocket Fluid, was supposed to prevent engine knock, but it just added complexity. The turbocharger itself was a $300 option in 1962, which was expensive for the time, and the system's unreliability led to a short production run. Manufacturers knew they needed a better solution something that could deliver instant throttle response without sacrificing top-end power. The problem was that a single large turbo took too long to spool, while a small turbo couldn't handle high RPM airflow. Engineers experimented with different approaches, but the real breakthrough came when they realized that using two smaller turbos could split the workload. Twin turbos solved the lag problem by allowing each turbo to operate in a more efficient range. Instead of one big turbine struggling to spin up, two smaller ones could respond much faster. This also helped with heat management, since the exhaust gases were divided between two units instead of overloading a single one. The result was smoother, more predictable power delivery, without the sudden surge that made early turbo cars so difficult to drive. Twin Turbo Engineering Breakthrough The reason twin turbos work better than a single large turbo comes down to exhaust gas velocity. A big turbo needs a huge amount of exhaust flow to spin up, which creates that lag at low RPMs. Smaller turbos spool faster, but engineers originally thought they couldn't handle the airflow needed at high RPMs. That's where twin scroll designs changed everything. Modern Porsches use twin scroll turbos that pair specific cylinders to each turbo for better exhaust pulse timing. The exhaust manifold is designed so cylinders fire into separate scrolls in the turbine housing, for example, in a four cylinder engine with a 1342 firing order. Cylinders one and four feed one scroll, while two and three feed the other. This keeps exhaust pulses from interfering with each other, which makes the turbo respond faster. D-Sport magazine tested this and found twin scroll setups reach full boost 30% quicker than single turbos. The real advantage is in how these systems manage exhaust flow differently. The manifold runners need to be equal length with similar bends, so exhaust pulses arrive at the turbine smoothly. If you mismatch a twin scroll manifold with a single scroll turbo, you lose all the benefits. It has to be a complete system. Full Race Motorsports ran simulations on a 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine and found twin scroll setups kept exhaust gas velocity within 4% variation between runners. Single scroll designs had up to 15% variation, which means wasted energy. Testing shows how much this improves real world performance. D-Sport ran acceleration tests with a 2.4 liter Nissan using twin scroll turbos and found it was 0.49 seconds faster from 45 to 80 miles per hour compared to a single scroll setup. That's nearly three car lengths in a race. The twin scroll also hit peak boost 400 RPM lower, making the engine feel bigger than it actually was. The difference comes from how efficiently the exhaust energy reaches the turbine. Parallel twin turbos take this further by splitting the workload across the RPM range. At low revs, both turbos work together for quick response. As engine speed increases, they adjust to maintain boost pressure without choking airflow. 
This is why modern supercars can have massive power without the lag of old turbo systems. The turbos are always operating in their most efficient range, whether you're just leaving a stoplight or pushing red line. Supercar case studies. The McLaren 720S shows what modern twin turbos can do. Its 4.0 liter V8 makes 710 horsepower. But the important part is how it delivers that power. The twin turbos are sized so they spool up fast, giving the car better response than some naturally aspirated V12S. This isn't just about peak numbers. The turbos are tuned to work across the whole RPM range. You get strong pull from low revs all the way to redline without the sudden surge of old turbo cars. That makes the 720S easier to drive fast, even though it has so much power. Ferrari used to say turbos ruined engine response. They stuck with naturally aspirated engines for decades because they wanted that instant throttle feel. But the 488 GTB changed their mind. It's 3.9 liter twin turbo. V8 proved you could have turbo power without losing response. The key was using two smaller turbos instead of one big one, along with precise tuning of the exhaust system. Thermal imaging shows how this setup runs cooler than a single turbo making the same power. The heat gets spread between two turbos, which helps with reliability when the engine is working hard. Porsche's 911 Turbo S shows how much twin turbos can improve performance. After switching to this setup, the car's 0-60 to 60 time dropped by 0.8 seconds. That's a huge difference in acceleration. The twin turbos give full boost faster, so you get strong power right when you step on the gas. They also keep making boost all the way through the rev range where a single turbo might start to run out of breath. This isn't just about going faster in a straight line. The better throttle response helps with corner exits too. What's interesting is how these cars use twin turbos differently. The McLaren has them mounted close to the engine for quick response. Ferrari uses a hot V layout with the turbos between the cylinder banks. Porsche puts them out near the exhaust tips in the 911. Each approach has trade-offs in packaging and heat management, but they all solve the same basic problem how to get turbo power without turbo lag. The results speak for themselves, with these cars setting new standards for what turbocharged engines can do. The electric turbo future. Garrett Motion's e-turbo represents the next step in turbo technology. These electric assist turbos use a small motor to spin up the compressor before exhaust gases arrive, which completely eliminates lag. The system can deliver boost pressure almost instantly, even at engine speeds as low as 1200 RPM. That's something conventional turbos can't do, no matter how well they're tuned. The Mercedes-AMG SL43 uses this technology with its 2.0-liter four-cylinder, making 381 horsepower thanks to the electric turbocharger. The problem with these systems is complexity. An e-turbo needs extra wiring, control systems, and power management. The 48-volt electrical system in the AMG has to provide enough current to spin the turbo motor quickly. This adds weight and cost, which is why you only see e-turbos in high-end cars right now. The technology is still new, and manufacturers are working out how to make it reliable for everyday use. Garrett says their e-turbo can spin at up to 170,000 RPM, which puts a lot of stress on the bearings and electric motor. Research shows e-turbos are growing fast. A report from Markets & Markets predicts the electric turbocharger market will grow at 19% annually through 2030. That's much faster than conventional turbos. The same report says fuel economy improvements are driving this growth, since e-turbos can help engines run more efficiently. They allow smaller engines to make big power without the lag that would normally come with a turbo that size. The question is whether e-turbos will replace twin turbos or work with them. Some prototypes use both an e-turbo for low RPM response and conventional turbos for high RPM power. This could give the benefits of both systems. BorgWarner is developing a setup like this for performance cars. Their tests show it can reduce lag by up to 40% compared to twin turbos alone. But the added cost means it will probably stay in expensive cars for now. For most applications, twin turbos still make more sense. They're proven technology that delivers good response and power at a reasonable cost. The difference is that e-turbos can eliminate lag completely while twin turbos just reduce it. As battery and motor technology improves, e-turbos might become more common, but right now they're too expensive for mass market cars. The Mercedes system shows what's possible. Its e-turbo can spin up in 330 milliseconds, which is faster than a human can blink. That gives the engine full boost almost instantly with no waiting for exhaust flow to build. The trade-off is that the system needs careful cooling and power management. The turbo's electric motor generates heat and the 48 volt system has to deliver power consistently. These are solvable problems, but they add complexity.